Yes, good morning, good morning. I am back. Oh, this has been a fulfilled Friday morning for me. And yeah, I'm gonna be just a little bit selfish this morning because first of all, I just love this show. If you're just tuning in for the first time ever, ever, this is the Coach's Lounge with Barbara J. Beckley. And what I do is I bring wonderful, amazing, spectacular, I know, can I find any more descriptive, <laughs> descriptive words to describe these coaches that come on, these mentors, these teachers, and I always say they're the important part of the whole universe. You know why? Because they take the time out, their knowledge, their expertise, and they take that and they say, you know what? I want to help you. I want to help individuals move that needle in their life. And I was saying to myself, that would be so nice if there could be a show or something to express these wonderful coaches. And I said, you know what? Let me create one. <laughs> if there's not one out there, why do I always say, hey, if there's not one out there, create your own, right? So under the Diamond Factor Experience Network, which is this, this coaches, the Coaches Lounge comes on every Friday. And I bring some amazing coaches that I have been just blown away. And it has really been teaching me more and more how to even structure my own life and what I do as being a coach is one of my hats, but not today. My hat today is to make sure that you see the coach that I'm bringing on and see them shine. And they're going to give you those little golden nuggets, as I say, to say to yourself, hmm, I never thought of it like that. Or hmm, hint, hint, after you listen to the conversation and get to know them on the Coach's Lounge, reach out. <laughs> and if you feel like you don't need them, you know somebody that might need them. So there's no excuse for to sit there and not to share their information. So you see what I'm doing right now, right? <laughs> I don't have to hide it. I'm asking. It's an ask, not a tell, because somebody got on me a long time ago. You can't tell people who to talk to, who to teach bar. I said, well, yeah, I can do an ask, though, right? I can get around that. <laughs> so I ask you to give them the respect. They come on. They're taking their time to come on to the show because you just give this a little, just a little, you know, information of what they do. And then that's maybe something that you need to do. And I always tell people, if Oprah went, Oprah, Oprah, okay, own Oprah, has many coaches. Barbara Walters, many coaches. I mean, we can go through a, a whole bunch of celebrities alone if we want to start there first. And they have coaches, not just one, not just two, but they have a few of them in different sectors in their life. So it's, it's just to see how important it is to have that. So I want to introduce, uh, this is the queen of all queens. She has, and I had to have to just say, this woman has patience with me <laughs> and with the network because uh, technically, and you know, I'm, I'm open. I, I don't have no hidden agendas here. Uh, and I always say when things go, you know, um, our network last week, they basically told me, oh, by the way, we're doing maintenance. And they told me like maybe five, 10 minutes before my show. I'm like, really? <laughs> what are you doing? You're going to make me look bad. But, but then I had to wind up asking this queen if she can come on another week. And she looked at her schedule, and I know how busy she probably is, is, and said, Barbara, I, I can do it. And this is, this, is, this is the treat that I get. Like I said, the selfish part of me saying, I get to, to see you, Stacey, in action today. And she's coming on in a minute here. But before I do that, I want to introduce this wonderful woman. She is, this is like a triple, triple threat. She is an entrepreneur. She's a best-selling author, speaker, international, a coach. She does health, lifestyle, and epilepsy coaching. And that's really interesting. I love that. She's the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. She has empowered hundreds and thousands worldwide through books, webinars, websites, courses, educational videos, the live events, and the list goes on. She's also a queen of queen, as I call the women. Her book, Empowering Yourself and Not Letting Your Conditions Empower You, which already with that title alone, is just, it just, I got tingles in me. I was like, that is so, oh, whew. That gives you comprehensive, evidence-based, insightfulness, motivational, and inspiring playbook for empowering yourself. Key words, 
This queen uses key words to tell you basically what you're going to know after you read this book. I just love that. Playbook to empower yourself. Okay, I'm not going to I'm not going to keep you waiting. I'm not going to keep you waiting. <laughs> So let's meet this queen and let's get and just really get a pay, okay, get a piece of paper, a piece of paper, a pen, and you're going to be ready to take some notes because this is going to be a lesson. She's doing kind of, you know, I always ask the coaches, could they come on and do some key, just some key, you know, like three or key moments, but she's going to be doing kind of a small workshop for us. Isn't that exciting? So here she comes. I'm going to bring on Miss Stacy. There she is. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing well. And how are you? I am doing spectacular because you are on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 totally appreciate you, lady. So uh, my I, I just I know you have so, oh you just have so much in I mean, you know, I just said just a little small portion of what you do. But before we even start, because I know you have kind of a, a small, like a little teach you the workshop you're going to give us today. I mm -hmm. wanted to kind of first get into your just pulling the court curtain. I always say pulling that little background curtain in a people's life and just saying, how did you get to get to this point of what you're doing right now? And, wh and what was your why? Okay. So at the age of five, my parents heard a gurgling noise in the other room. Uh, my mother came on to check on me. At that time, I had like a little ear infection and a little virus going on, nothing major. The doctor put me on antibiotics. So she hears the gurgling noise. She goes in my room and I'm turning blue and I'm going in a grand mal seizure. She calls the ambulance and uh, they rushed me to the hospital. And um, immediately they um, induced me into a, four, into a coma, which lasted for four days. Um, it had turned into encephalitis and the virus had traveled to my brain and my brain was beginning to swell. So they uh, induced me into this um, coma and they said, most likely if she comes out, she'll probably be paraplegic or she'll have severe brain damage. So my father, who is from Greece, um, he came from a little island in Greece and uh, they had one big church there. And he used to tell me, it was a very heartwarming story, that there was a statue in front of the church and they used to have teardrops that came down the church's eye, the statue's eye, excuse me. So he was praying to her and he was praying that I would be okay. And on the fourth day, he opened his eyes after he prayed and a teardrop rolled down my eye. And I opened my eyes and I asked for McDonald's french fries. And, <laughs> and so he, you know, I was <laughs> out of everything, huh? <laughs> out of everything. Yeah. I wanted those fries, you know? So, um, uh, I came out and I wasn't paraplegic. I didn't have brain damage, but I did have epilepsy and to this day. They cannot find the scar tissue, which causes the epilepsy, but I had numerous mm. seizures, not just one type. Um, so most likely I have minor scar tissue throughout my brain, which causes the epilepsy. So living life was kind of like a roller coaster ride. It was mm. very, um, it was very hard. I had my ups and downs. I had good points and I had bad points. Later on in life, especially when I was going into college, those late night studying, you know, all that stress that goes on when you're trying to, you know, go through college and get your degree, it was putting a lot of um, stress on my body and my my mind. So I was having numerous seizures, and I, I got to some point where I said just don't think I'm going to be able to, to do this. You know, I wanted to get, I wanted to get my degree. I had hopes and dreams in my head, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it because I, I get, just kept having these constant seizures. So there was Epilepsy Foundation. Uh, they're based in Washington, D.C., and they have, uh, every state has one. I had written to their, they had a magazine back then, and I asked them if they would publish my article. And I asked people, how do they cope with epilepsy? How do they get through this? What are the ways that the techniques and the th things they do to, to get through this? And mm -hmm. to my, I was very stunned. It, I got three to 400 letters to my door uh, from people all over the United States and Canada, people sharing their stories, um, sharing, you know, their own emotions and what they do to get through living with epilepsy. And I was very touched and I actually learned from them. And the first thing I learned was I wasn't alone. A lot of times when we go through things in life, we feel alone. We feel like nobody is there. Nobody knows what we're going through. Nobody understands. But mm -hmm. at that point, I realized that I wasn't alone. 
And I learned a lot through these letters. I used a lot of their techniques and the tools they taught me in these letters, and I applied it to my own life. And I got through college, I got my degree. Then I went on to, I, I, wor I started working with a big corporation in New York. I got very lucky and I got a really great job. But then one day I felt an aura coming on I was in the hallway and that aura, if no one knows what an aura is, it's a signal your body's saying you're going to go into a seizure. Mm -hmm. And they I was looking around, I was trying to find a safe spot where I could go where no one would see me. But at, in that in that building, there, there was no safe spot. So, you know, I fell to the ground and I was awake during the seizure, but I couldn't move. I was, you know, frozen in that seizure. And one of the producers just walked right over me and kept walking. And I looked up and I said to myself, I can't believe he didn't even stop to help me. I was like, oh, my God. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my and God. So 30 minutes later, I, I another associate producer came over and they released me from my um, position. Mm. And uh, so I didn't let it get me, let it let it get me down. I said, you know what? I'm going to move on. This wasn't meant to be. And so I started to work as a freelance writer and do other things and started to open up my own businesses. And um, I started, you know, in, in college, I had taken those letters and I had created them. And I said, one day I'm going to write a book. And I started writing the book in college, but and then I put it to the side. And then the gentleman who now is my husband said, would you finish that damn book already? So I did. And <laughs> and then- you Always know, need that person to push you, right? <laughs> you know, one person to give you that little push to get going, you know? So I was I was finishing that book and I uh, I got a, a letter from somebody um, and they had, once the book was published, someone had written to me and emailed me and said, you know, I was on the verge of suicide and I read your book and I followed your regiments and it gave me inspiration to live and a light bulb went up and I was like, wow, you know, I said, you know, this is my calling. You know, mm -hmm. I, I realized how powerful the wisdom of words can really be. And at the same time, I had a herbalist had contacted me and he asked me, can you do research for me? I need a lot of research and writing. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing that at the same time. And I started saying, wow, a lot of these natural herbs and these techniques sound like they could help me. And I started applying a lot of these things to my own life. And I went from 12 seizures to nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, to being controlled. So it was it was a combination of my medication and living a healthy lifestyle, applying these herbals, a change in my entire lifestyle and just creating a, a, a life that worked for me, you know, giving myself limitations. We don't, no one likes limitations, but sometimes we have to give ourselves limitations if we want to be healthy, if we want to be, you know, to the point we are, you know, where we desire in life to be. Yeah. So um, that's how it all got started. And, you know, I started making a little website. I don't know if you remember Blogger back then, but it was like a little website that Google gave it to you for free. And I, I right away, I started writing, I said, you know, wow, you know, these things could have, you know, help not just people with epilepsy, but they could, you know, they could help people with all different conditions. Yeah. So that's what I started writing about. And, and right away, 400 people came on and then 10,000. And then, you know, I started working with a, a web designer and he said, you know what, I can make your little blog a really nice website. And he did. And I used that website and, you know, I went from 10,000 to a hundred thousand and, and the website kept growing and growing and growing. And, I just, you know, I just started writing my books and started teaching and just started, you know, helping others. Mm -hmm. And it was a great feeling to be able to, to help others. You know, I think the one of the greatest accomplishments in the world is being able to help another individual, you know, with yes. their own with their own life. I, I feel like, you know, that that mm -hmm. is the best accomplishment anyone can ever feel, that feeling of helping someone else, you know, change their lives. Yes. And I love, first of all, thank you for sharing your story. That's I, that's one of the things I really thrive on with the, with the coaches' lounge is hearing the coaches' stories behind the, the, the coach because that always, I feel like, is the foundation because, like you said, you found through going through what you went through, Stacey, and then pulling from that point as a child. And then at that point, even on your job and went through some, you know, like you said, with the seizure, and then found out, you know what? I didn't supposed to be there anyway. I was supposed to be doing my thing. I was supposed to have my own. I'm a coach. I was supposed to be helping people and empowering right. and helping them get through. So sometimes we go, you know, I always tell people there's sometimes a weird way how we kind of get to where our purpose is. But once yeah. we get there, Stacy, it is wonderful. And can that's when, like you said, now you're helping others. 
So yeah, for you wonderful. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank wonderful. you. So now this is now, okay, now let's get to the really exciting part. Now that all this stuff that you learn and stuff. Now I know you said one of the workshops you do, and you're going to give a little tease here of how to yeah. teach others how to empower themselves. And right. I know that word, I was going to say, if you can go a little into that word, because a lot of times some people, you know, they don't get certain words they don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if they don't understand it, then everything else doesn't fall like it should. So if right. you can do a little part of that and then go through your... Um, transformational those different stages that you talk about yes i want to grab something real quick because i created something that i wanted to show hold sure. on one second no problem and while she's doing that i'll just let everybody know if you're just chiming in uh this is the coach's lounge with barbara beckley i'm with the wonderful and amazing <clears throat> stacy she is um like i said a triple threat. She's a best seller. <laughs> She's just amazing. If you didn't, if you didn't miss her, if you missed her story, if you're just chiming in, you need to come back because this is going to be on replay forever. <laughs> <laughs> Some people's like, well, we'll be down for two weeks. No, this will be on forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they so. You know, basically what I teach is I teach how to, everybody has empowerment in our lives. We all carry empowerment and, um, you know, being able to um, have empowerment, empowerment is surviving to thrive, you know, to thrive in. We survive in life. We, every day we are, we are filled with obstacles in our lives, but, you know, we have to learn how to endure those obstacles and overcome them. So, you know, in life, sometimes people feel like they're just getting by every day and they feel like they're getting dragged. We, we can change that. So we feel like we're not, um, survive anymore that we're thriving that we can overcome we can be powerful we can get everywhere we want in life that life doesn't have to be you know we don't have to look at the negative things in life that we can look at the positive we can feel an energy in ourselves a, you know a positive energy that can help us get through anything we want and the, the way we do that is involving and reflecting on our own personal values our skills and bringing goals into our lives and being prepared to adjust our behavior in an order to achieve our goals. Confidence and strength is one of the main things that we need to focus on because once we have confidence and once we have strength, we can endure anything in life. But the question is, how do I grab that strength? How do I build, when we go through things in life, especially if we have illnesses or we suffer from stress or anxiety, or we're just not feeling good about ourselves, how do we get from low self-esteem to feeling great about ourselves. That's a challenge, you know, but there are ways to overcome that so we can go from low self esteem to high self esteem. It's managing yourself so you can use organ take organization and time in our lives. And you don't have to, this is not a full time job. This is time each day, just taking some time out for yourself to build yourself so you could have that empowerment. So you can, because we carry that empowerment in ourselves, but sometimes we just, we don't believe enough in ourselves and we kind of repress our emotions. We, we don't focus, you know, because sometimes change can be fearful. You know, we change in a lot of times in life, we fear change, you know, um, and people don't know, well, if I change, what am I going to become? You know, what's going to happen to me, you know, but you know, everybody wants to feel confident. Everyone wants to be strong. Everybody at some, you know, want, has a has a, a desire, you know, uh, to become an achiever, an accomplishment, you know, in life, and to be able to, you know, reach their goals and their dreams in life. But like I mentioned, people fear change and they fear fa failure. You know, that's a big thing too. They want the, they want these dreams that they put in the back of their head, but they're afraid of failure. But I don't believe in the word failure. I believe if we try, that's good enough. Give yourself a pat on the back. We might not get to the exact, yes, give yourself a pat on the back. You know, we might not get exactly where we want to be that we set in our head, but that doesn't mean that you failed. You know, it means that maybe that wasn't meant for you exactly the way you interpreted it in your mind. Maybe there's something else, but you just tried. So mm -hmm. that's part, that, sh that should build your self-confidence just a tad, you know, in itself, that you had enough of courage to make a change in your life. 
That's you know, cool. we have to fa face our fears, overcome, you know, the denial in our life. Because when we endure problems in our life, a lot of times we are in denial because we do not want to accept mm. the fact that we have a problem, an issue in our lives that we have to face. And that's the first step that I've learned, you know, how do we get through the denial stage? Because when we have problems in our life, the best way to um, not have to deal with problems is to be in denial. Say, no, 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 everything's fine. I'm, I'm good. No, 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 I don't, no, 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 no. And, you know, and, and what happens? The problem still exists and you're, you're lying to yourself and that problem is not going to go away. So, you know, people say, you know, how do you know if you're in denial? You know what? Well, you don't acknowledge the problem. But just mm -hmm. like I mentioned just now, you try not to face the problem and you try not to look at the facts of the problem. Mm -hmm. You want to downplay it as much as possible. You mm -hmm. want to downplay the consequences and what situations can do to you. OK, so, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, they just, you know, they, they feel like, it. well, you know what, if I lie to myself, then, you know, I don't have to deal with it, you mm -hmm. know. And so then we have to figure out, all right, how do we get over the denial stage? You know, how do we move past the denial? How do we overcome denial? Well, ask yourself, am I scared? Ask yourself, what am I fearful of? Think about what will happen if you stay in denial and you don't empower yourself to cope with this condition. Now, it's great to express your emotions. However, you don't want anyone, you, you don't want to always tell everybody how you feel. You know, people are very private people and people are scared sometimes to tell others because they are afraid to be judged. That comes with low self-esteem also. Mm -hmm. You know, people are worried what others will think. Well, mm -hmm. who cares what others think? You know, you are, the, you, you should be caring about how, what you think, how you feel. You should be putting yourself on the pedestal. People sometimes don't believe they should be on that pedestal. But girl, mm -hmm. you're not going to get anywhere in life unless you put yourself on a pedestal. You cannot help others until you help yourself, you know? And <laughs> it is okay to express your emotions. And if you don't want to express your emotions to another individual or if you don't feel enough of trust in other people around you, then write a journal. Create a journal and put it on paper. Just getting it out of you will make you feel so much better. You know, just write those emotions down. And you know what? You know, just if you don't, if you're, if you repress those emotions for so long and you don't even know how you feel, if you feel numb inside, well, how did I feel today? You know, mm -hmm. start like with little easy stuff, you know, mm -hmm. okay, I woke up this morning. How did I feel? You know, and then you start to dig deeper and dig. Well, why did I feel like that? Mm -hmm. You know, and then you start moving little by little. And then you start writing in that journal. And then sometimes things will just come about. You'll, you'll hit something inside you. You know that, you know, I believe the mind, body, and soul are all connected. And, you know, our, our intuition and our heart are always speaking to us. And we sometimes have to just, you know, concentrate, focus, relax, write. Mm. And things will come to you, things that you didn't even know. And honesty. Oh, my God. People sometimes lie to themselves so much that they don't even know the truth anymore. Be honest and ask yourself. You know, you have to help your, you know, by, by the first thing is to accept that you have an issue in your life. The second thing is, is that you have to be honest with yourself. You know, you have to say, okay, you know what? I, I don't believe in the word perfect. Nobody's perfect. Get out of that media, you know, that, 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 you know, they try to put that persona of that perfect person, that perfect individual that nobody is perfect. Have you ever seen a model when they're all done up and then you see them on the street and, and, and the photographer takes a picture of them before they're all not done up. You don't even know who that person is. There's no sight. They're just like us. They're nobody's perfect. Come on now. Let's be real. <laughs> you know? I love it, love it. <laughs> Before you go on, Stacey, I was thinking you're just giving so many golden nuggets here and there. You're just dropping them back, back, back. And <laughs> the thing I wanted to ask you, you know, through your coaching that you do with people, um, you talked about denial and you talked about, you know, thinking about others. Do you see a lot of individuals when they come to you that because they're thinking so much of, Oh my God, what are they going to say? Or I don't want them thinking this about me and all that. Do you get a lot of that? And do you have to kind of push through that with people? 
Oh, definitely. That's one of the biggest problems. The biggest mm -hmm. problem is self-esteem, not feeling that you're worthy. If you grow up, 70% of our society is dysfunctional. So if you grow up in a dysfunctional environment, and people are telling you you're not worthy, or you go into society and you get banged down. One, you know, you keep trying and you keep trying, and you're just not, you're not, you're not achieving those things that you want to achieve in life. Sometimes you think you're not worthy, you know, and you know, a lot of times it all stems from the childhood, the root of the problem. It always people don't realize, but how a person is raised will affect them as they get older as an adult. They're just like dogs. If you have a puppy and you give that puppy lots of love and kisses and you treat them really well when they're a puppy, you're going to have the nicest little puppy. But if you start kicking that puppy and throwing it around and you start, you know, and start teasing that puppy, that puppy is going to knock the shit out of you when he gets bigger. He's going to growl at you. He's going to try to scratch you. You know what I mean? You know, you got to, you know, you got to be really nice to people. You got to treat them with respect. That's the key word. When you are raising a child, you got to give them love, respect, praise them, and mm -hmm. give them the confidence when they're a child. Because if you keep pushing that child and say, no matter what, if you have an illness, a disorder, a, 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 you know, anything, anything that's going on in your life, if you tell that child, you could overcome it. You can go overcome it. You are wonderful. You are great. That that child is going to grow up to a young adult and no matter what they're going through, they're going to say, I am great. I could do this. I could do this. But a lot of people don't do that. They mm -hmm. follow the behaviors of the, the generation before. And it's just a cycle and a cycle and a mm -hmm. cycle until it gets broken. And you have to come to the point in life saying, do I like the way I feel? You know, do I want to feel better? Well, you got, you can feel better. You could release the power within you. You can empower mm -hmm. yourself and you have to realize that you are a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. And that goes into building self-esteem, you know, and the first thing you have to do is accept yourself. You have to accept who you are. You have to realize that th this is the person I am right now in the current, in the current area that I'm at. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn to love that person. And, you know, a lot of people hate themselves. They dislike who they are. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what? You, you might not be satisfied with who you are at the moment, but once you start to learn how to accept, this is who I am, mm -hmm. you understand, then you can start loving yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to realize the past is the past. We can't change the past. Mm -hmm. Why dwell on the past? I have people that I know that are in their 70s still talking about their childhood years. Yes. You know, they're, they're talking about when I was 20, so-and-so said this to me. Well, you're you're not 20 anymore, and you can't change that. And All right. Not even they're. I was about to say they're probably not even here anymore. I mean, I hate to say it like that, especially if you're yeah. in your 70s. They might have, you know. But like you said, we do take. I'm glad just to pause for a minute on that. I'm glad you brought that up because we do we do go back. I mean, I had to catch myself a few times. Yeah. Um. The, the we go all back do. Oh, when I was like when I was 19 and 20, and I was, you know, and I was like, okay, Barbara, get okay, get out of there. I mean, it's yeah. okay to say, okay, you had your life then, you right. appreciated it, or you went through ops, whatever happened, but you yeah. have to move forward. And I'm glad that you said forward. that because a lot of times people get stuck in that, what they call it, nostalgia or something like that. Where yeah, they exactly. Right yeah. Because the past is the past. We cannot change the past. Focus on the present and make changes in the present so you could have a fulfilling future. That's mm -hmm. key. Because the past is unchangeable. So why dwell on it? Why dwell on it? And you know what? And the biggest key too is forgiveness. People who hurt you in the past, don't carry that on your shoulders. Things that bad that happened to you, get help and learn how to take that baggage off of you because forgiveness is key. You know, some, I've seen people who've had traumatic events, really bad traumatic events, and they learned how to forgive that person. And people will look at them like, how could you forgive them? Well, you know what? Once you forgive a person, you, you'll see a whole brick come off of your shoulders. You'll see a dove fly away. And he's taking all that stuff that pulled you down because you know what? It's over. And that person wasn't in their right mind, maybe. That person had their own issues. That person grew up in a dysfunct, whatever the case may be. But forgive and forget move on. That's key. It's key. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And you know, I just think about, because everybody, we all have our stories, just like, you know, you went through, I went through some things, obstacles, but like you said, I always say, you know, it's, it's, 
stepping stones of strength. That's what I always tell yes. people. And just yes. it's just another stepping stone in your life to create more strength, more learning for you, more growth for you yes. to move to the next level that you need to go to. Yes. And I also tell people we have to understand our inner spirit. Like I was telling you earlier before, you know, to under you you need to know your inner spirit is to understand every inch of your mind, your body and your soul. You need to fig figure out your motivations in life, your purposes, your goals, your passions, your fears. You you have to understand who you are as a person. And that's when you start putting that down on paper, figuring out who you are and what you want to be, you know, and, you know, figuring out it, it is, you know, I always say, it's not the mind that tells you everything. It's your heart. You have to, you have to connect with your heart. You have to connect with your heart and your heart will lead you and guide you. And it, you know, our whole, everything is intertwined. Even if you talk about the seven chakras, everything has to be in line to work. And the same thing goes, your mind, your body, your spirit, and people don't even realize, but even over 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. So mm. when we go through life and we go through stresses and we don't change ourselves to better ourselves, we're just opening our body and opening our immune system. Mm -hmm. And we are, we, you know, more, more illnesses come about, you know, and it's, you know, I, I talk about these exercises in my empowerment book and I teach people how to connect with your inner spirit, how you can connect with your spirit and understand what your body needs. Cause your body is always telling you, it's giving you signals. Just like when you get pain, that's a, that's a signal from your body that goes to your brain and saying, yo, I'm not working right in this arm. Help me. Hello. You know, you know, it's your body talks signal. to you, you know, yeah. and when, you know, and if, if your body talks to you by giving you signals and you get inflammation, you know, it's telling you there's something going on over here, you know, hello, you know, go to the doctor or get some help because you can see this arm is swollen and this arm is not your body talks to you mm. so does your spirit so does your heart so does your inner self mm, it's good. all intertwined together mm. you know and we were going back to accepting yourself you have to get to a point in your life when you look in the mirror and you have to like the person you see mm. how many times people come into the mirror and i'm sure we've all had this even i've had this you look in the mirror and you just don't like the person you see you're not happy with that person you know so what do you do do you give up and stop looking in the mirror? Do you put a sheet over the mirror and say, well, I don't got to deal with it. If I don't, just like going in denial, if I don't got to look at her, I don't got to deal with her, you know? You have to become that empowered person and find the person you once loved. You know, you have to, mm. who, when was my most happiest point in my life? What will make me happy in life? Yes. And you have to figure out yourself. And I talk all about this in my book, step by step. And I give exercises to show people how to connect, how to get out of denial, how to learn how to love themselves, how to accept themselves, how to get, you know, make all those tragic events and, and let them, let them fly away. I talk about connecting with the body and mm -hmm. I show, you know, and the, the biggest key is learning to love yourself, learning to love who you are as a person. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just taking this all in. I am so glad that this is on like record. <laughs> I mean, it's live now, but I'm glad it's going to be here so I can take more notes of what you're saying, Stacey. Just good insight. I mean, you know, learn about, like you said, denial, accepting, love, self esteem. You know, I know you're going to get into like this uh, setting goals and gratitude part in a minute, but just the ones that you talked about. You know, it, I know it's a list and probably you're saying, okay, Barbara, that's easier said than done. And we understand that. That's why you, that's why I bring back about needing a coach because yeah. it does take time. It and does you need take that time. person to decide to say, you know what, let's, let's walk through this. Just like Stacey said, she has certain ways in her coaching, in her workshops and her webinars that she takes you through certain ex exercises to mm -hmm. get you to a certain level. So it's not like, ding, okay, I'm not in denial no more. No, it, sometimes it don't work that way. If it did, you wouldn't need any coaches. I mean, to right. be honest, you wouldn't need anybody. But we all know, including myself, uh, and I have, when you said denial, just really pinpointed me when I was denying the fact that I didn't want to go to the doctor, come to find out I had um, cancer. I had cancer. Wow. 
And instead of saying, okay, Barbara, like you said, when something in your brain and some their pain and it's saying, ding, 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 there's a problem. I was like, ding, ding, ding. I don't hear it. And that's when I went in denial mode. And, yeah. and, and it caused me, caused more grief because something yeah. that could have been caught earlier. Right. Didn't get caught when it should have, should have. I'm in remission now, but I had to get a, 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 a hysterectomy done, an mm -hmm. urgent one when I went to the doctor because everything was going crazy in my body. So wow. just like you said, Stacy, if you hear, if you're in that denial stage, that can cause more problems in the long run. So oh, yeah. tell people, you know, you, you just have to just say, let me stop the moment here and think of, see what's going on in my body. Like you said, mind, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. and direct myself and get out of that. No, I'm not getting denial. I'm not going to go in that world right now. I need to, put it right in front of me and do something about it. So that's so powerful of, of parts of what you do in your coaching. And I'm so glad that's included. Yeah. And you know what? Everybody needs help at some point of our lives, you know, and, you know, even coaches need help sometimes, you know, we are people, we are not, you know, people are people. We're, we, we are human beings and we all need help. And you know what? And it doesn't, it's not a quick fix. It takes time. It takes time, you know, nothing in life. When you see something, you know, rapid weight loss, easy fix, quick and easy, you know, get rid of your belly fat in, in two days. You know, these are things that's just not realistic. You know, this is fantasy and de desire versus reality. You know, <laughs> it would be nice. I would love to get rid of that belly fat. Oh, my God. Happen, well, you said you know, that. <laughs> not gonna happen in two days <laughs> or two weeks or three so yeah I've been trying for 10 years to get rid of that belly fat and it's still not exactly the way i would like it <laughs> <laughs> so get out your head yeah. get that out your head already like you said just get it it's baby steps i i call it baby steps that's it that's really what is. it's all about it's all it's baby steps it's it's little by little and before you know it you will see progress within the months you will see you will see changes within yourself and you'll see yourself moving forward in life but it's all going to take time you know mm -hmm. it's first you know you start with one thing and then you move and you move and you move and then you start going up a hill and mm -hmm. you're not going to reach that plateau that that you know that pedestal we were talking about in one day it, it's going to take time, you know, and, you know, a, a daily servant of gratitude will empower your life. You know, sometimes people just don't realize we we are very lucky to live in the United States. We are given a lot of things that other countries are not, you know, um, so lucky to have. And I always say, you know what, people people take that for granted. And sometimes the littlest things in life um, mean so much. And we don't realize that until they're taken away from us. And yes that's when we realize how much those little things in life really meant to us. And, you know, research has shown that people who incorporate daily um, gratitude into their lives will improve their lives significantly, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And a recent study um, by psychologists have shown that people who incorporated gratitude into their lives obtain better health, sounder sleep, less anxiety, mm -hmm. and depression, higher long-term satisfaction with life, and a kinder behavior towards others, including their romantic partners. Because when you are stressed and you are having anxiety and you are not, you are just thinking, I have to do this, I want this, and you're not looking at what you have, you're you're not you're not happy because you're looking at, I need to pay the bills, I need to make more money, I need to do this, I need to do that. But think about it. You have people around you that love you. You have the, the, when you walk outside, you know, if you're not living in the city, you might even see a patch of grass in the city, but you, you have the air, the trees, you know, the grass, you know, you have be be the beauties of nature. You have people around you that, that care about you and love you. You know, you have so many things you could be, you know, you could have, have for. gratitude for, you know, the mm -hmm. littlest things in life, you know, even driving a car, people with epilepsy, you know, so many people can't drive because of their seizures mm -hmm. and people feel imprisoned in their own home and, and mm -hmm. not even just epilepsy, but a lot of people in, with other dis different conditions had to stop driving because they just weren't capable anymore, either lost the strength in their legs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize these little things that we have, you know, they mean so much, you know, and being able to be with people that you love and so many things, you know, uh, you know, people, I have know. To, 
I, I just can't fathom. I know one person I talked to just the other day and we were mm -hmm. talking about gratitude, like you said. And, right. I, and I was telling them, I said, you know, I'm just so grateful for having both of my legs. And they're like, what happened? Did you get an accident or something? You know, the first thing you know, I said, I said, no, I'm grateful for that because just a few days ago, like you're saying, the swollen, one of my legs swelled up really bad. Right. Really, really bad. And I was like, uh oh, wow. I didn't get denial. I was like, I said, <laughs> what's going on? And then yeah. was, I had, I had um, water. I retained a lot of water. So, you know, I called the doctor and basically told me, okay, this barber is what you do. And then like a matter, like a day passed, everything, you know, I drank, flushed out the salt because it was too much salt intake I had. Yeah. And which was weird because I don't really eat. I didn't think I ate anything with a lot of salt in it, but you never right. know what body absorbs. And I was okay after two days. So I, I was telling my friend, I said, I'm thankful for my legs because it swelled up the other day. And then she turned around and told me the weirdest thing. Weirdest thing, Stacey, you know what she told me? What? She said, well, I really don't have nothing to be thankful or grateful for. <laughs> You're breathing. You're living. <laughs> you know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you be there talking Thank to you and having your friendship if she wasn't breathing and living. <laughs> Can you please just sing that to the world right now, Stacey? I was yeah. like, you can't think of nothing. <laughs> you know? And I didn't want to like, I was like, I had to be careful because I didn't want to just be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But see, we, we take for, again, going back to what you said earlier. We take for granted other things. And then when you when a person comes to tell me they said they don't know what to be thankful for or grateful for, I'm like, uh, I, I can think of something right this second and it's really quick. <laughs> it doesn't take that long. So lady, you are so on on target. You know, part of what you do in your coaching about is mentioning about being grateful because you could go on and on and on. There's so much stuff you just, oh, the yeah. list goes on. <laughs> the list goes on. It goes yeah. on, you know. And, you know, you know, I have in my book, I list like seven steps. And I, in my book, I, I talk about how to accept and how to love yourself. And I go through those steps with people. And, you know, and, and, you know, I explain thoroughly in my book, how to accept yourself and how to love yourself. Because, you know, people don't think it's possible. Some people just don't think it's possible, but it is possible, you know. And, you know, I, I you know, I, I discuss that in my book and, you know, and everybody has to realize that you could boost your self-confidence, that boosting your self-confidence is something that is not impossible. You know, self-confidence is a characteristic that everyone can attain yet feeling insecure about ourselves and perhaps the most common problem of humanity. The, mo the majority of people in society think that you have to be born with it, but it's not true. You live, you learn how to be confident just as you learn how to cook and drive a car. Self-confident all boils down to how you feel about yourself. And once we feel good about ourselves, once we learn to accept ourselves, love ourselves, start accomplishing our short-term and our long-term goals that I talk about in my book, because in life, we need to be organized. Like I mentioned in the beginning, if you want to change your life, well, get that journal out. Start. You got to start making short-term goals, long-term goals. You have to have a section about how you write about your feelings. You have to have a section about how you have what you have gratitude for. Talk about what you have gratitude for each day. And you start to see how lucky you are as a person. And then you start to feel good about yourself, you know? Mm. And number one is begin that journal. You know, that's number one for building your self-confidence. And two is you have to realize that the past is unchangeable. We are no longer in the past. You cannot change it. So stop thinking about, and you know, the past and what others said to you and what you went through. It's over. We can't do anything about it. And then you just got to learn to love yourself and accept yourself for who you are as a person. And I talk about how to do that in my book. And then you have to dig deep inside yourself. And that's when we talked about the inner self and understanding the mind, body, and soul connection. And then, you know, and then before you know it, once you start accomplishing those, those short-term goals and those long-term goals, and you start doing all these things I talk about in my book, you start to develop self-confidence and it becomes easier for people to, to develop that self-confidence. Because once you start building it, it's like Legos. You start with the bottom and then you start building and building. Before you know it, you got a big building going on mm -hmm. and it becomes pretty sturdy by the time you get up to the top until one of the, th those dogs that have a little bit of, uh, 
you know, thing because you didn't treat them nice, knocks it over. But otherwise, it's pretty sturdy, you know? There's that yeah. dog coming back. If you yeah. don't treat them, don't put the love there. It's going to turn out. You don't love, you're screwed. You got it when, you know... You know, you have to treat others how you want to be treated be yourself. Treated. And respect so and love is key. Even if you don't know that person, if I walk and buy somebody and saying, wow, that's a nice blouse. You just made that person's day. That yeah. person might have low self-esteem, but by you making a compliment, you might have just helped that person, believe it or not, you know? So and it's, it, it's you know, it's, it's all about, you know, we have to... We have to really change our outlook, retrain the brain and retrain how we feel as a person. And then we got to start giving back, you know, and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, you have to start begin starting to change the things in life that you dislike about yourself. Well, if you, you know, you can't, you can't get better with a magic wand in order to change, you have to, you have to change the things you dislike about yourself. Confidence comes from within you need to concentrate on the positive things about yourself. And that's one big thing that people don't do. They focus more on the negative than they do on the positive. But if you focus on the positive, you will see a humongous change in your self-esteem. I used to say that I'm grateful for having epilepsy and people used to look at me and give me the oddest look. And I said, well, you know what? I was on my way to you know a, a really huge career and I was on my way to a lot of good opportunities. But, you know, I was I was envisioning myself having martinis on a Friday night, buying expensive pocketbooks and buying these nice high heels. And, you know, I I, you know, all these things happen. And then all of a sudden my life turned around and that dream was out the door. But you know what? I started working with people. I started doing a lot of advocate work. I started helping people that had disorders, that had diseases, that had illnesses, that were going through stress. Mm -hmm. And I like I said to you before, the biggest feeling was helping these people, the biggest feeling of achievement. And you know what? It made me look at life by by having my epilepsy, by changing my, my entire life, getting changed like a whirlwind. Yes. I am able to sympathize, you know, with people yes. and understand how people feel and, you know, comfort those people where I don't think if I if I was heading down that track, I don't think I would have gave a shit, to be honest with you. But, you know, when I look at people, I care. I have a care, you know, within myself because I know what you've gone through somewhat because I've gone through a lot myself. So I could I could relate to people. I can understand where they're coming from. And I don't look at people, you know, I look at people with love and I and I have, you know, sympathies for the people and I don't feel sorry, but I feel I, I know where you're coming from because I've been there and I still, every day, epilepsy doesn't go away. I have to take care of myself. You know, we, we have to always take care of ourselves as we get older, more things come about. And it's all about, you know, um, taking care of yourself and, and it's all about loving yourself and giving back to the world. And you know what? My, you know, sometimes I always, I believe everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. So I look at everything that happens to me. I, I try to find the positive in the situation and not fall into that pity party and not get into that sadness and that depression because that's what happens. People fall into, they feel pity. They feel sorry for themselves. They fall into depression. They get angry. They get anxiety. And then all of a sudden, life's not worth it in their eyes and they, they their self-esteem goes downhill you don't have to be like that find that power within you release it and live life because everyone deserves a happy and fulfilling life yes and you only have this one you know i know yes. everybody have different beliefs but i believe you have this one life why don't you just live it fruitfully and and, and you yes. know happy and and just content in what what you want to do of you and love yourself so you can love others and, yes. and you know, sometimes we make things a little bit more difficult than it could be. I yeah. know I do. I, I have to say, I put my hand up. Yes, I have made my life in some areas a little bit difficult. And I and I say to myself, you know what, Barbara? Now it's time to, like you said, Stacy, move it forth. Now you learn. You know now what you're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So people need to. People need to learn that they have to have tremendous pride in themselves. You have to remember you are number one. Everybody in life deserves to be number one. You know, there is no number two. You are number one. 
and you need to walk in a room and say, I am number one, you know, and you have to feel it and you have to, yeah, I'm going to conquer the world today. Yeah. You know, one. <laughs> I am number one. Yes. Okay, everybody, you heard Stacey, you are number what? You one. are number one. Yes. <laughs> I love it. See, so you got me pumped up. Now I'm like, okay. <laughs> You're not number two. You are number one and you're going to rock the world because you've got everything it takes. And you, yes. all you need to do is find it within you and you will rock this world. Okay. Now, if you can't tell me you can't want this coach, please come on now. Everybody, Stacey is amazing. <laughs> you know, look her two books, you know, empowering yourself and not letting your conditions empower you. Please pick that book up. It is an, an, a very important in your life. It's like a playbook, right like here. she said, right there. And Stacy, please show the books because <laughs> I don't want to get that visibility for you. And the positivity right. so and, and gratitude Power journal. Yourself. Yeah, and uh, to get that as well. Okay. Yes, okay. ladies, show right your book, show your success. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what it's all about here on the Coaches Lounge. I bring the coaches. I want you to see the books and the learning and the techniques and stuff that they use to help you. That's what it's all about. Coach, and thanks very, you so much. You oh, just, you're very welcome. It's a light to me today. Now, before we go, before we go, I always like to do this with my coaches. I want to, um, any, this lasting, just anything last that you just want people to know, give you 30 seconds. I'm going to take myself down so you can talk to the audience and I'll be right back. Okay. So basically everybody has the power within them to become the person they always wanted to. We have desires when we have needs, but we can make those desires and those needs a reality. Now come to my website at stacychalemi.com and you will find everything you need. My coaching sessions, my books, everything is there to help you. If you have any questions, please feel to con uh, feel free to contact me. My blog, thecompleteherbalguide.com, is linked to stacychalemi.com, and that has over 5,000 articles about how to heal your body, how to keep healthy, recipes, everything you can think of on how to heal yourself. And you can come to my website. I have all these different things to help you, to help your life to connect with yourself and become the person you always dreamed of becoming because we all are capable of being everything we ever desired. We are the masters of our own universe. Take what you have in your heart and bring it to the world because you are a special person and you can make anything happen and you can change yourself to be that person you always dreamt of being. And you can come, my, my books are on amazon.com. I have the Empower Yourself. Uh, book. I have the Positivity and Gratitude book journal. If anyone has epilepsy, we just re I recreated my my Epilepsy You're Not Alone book this year, and it is has a lot of different techniques and tools that we talked about in this session to help people with epilepsy. And once again, I'm on all the platforms. So if you want to come to any of the uh, platforms, you'll find me there. And I hope I've helped somebody today. Oh, no, not hope. You have. <laughs> We're going to the hope is out the door. You have helped a lot of people today and you will continue to help so many people, Stacey. Coach Stacey. Oh, thank you so much. Ah, a shiny. Remember, everybody, what Coach Stacey told us today? You are number one. You are <laughs> number one. I mean, you know, a whole lot is golden nuggets, but that's the one I want people to remember, too, that you are number one. Because you, you are have number one. I always tell people that. So, of course, you're number one. <laughs> yes. So we are the masters of our own universe. Yes. Telling you your own empire. Your own universe, yes. your own empire. That's what I tell people. Uh, so you just show up in that in that in that way. But Stace, Coach Stacy, thank you so much again, lady. Thank you for being oh, here with me. This has been spectacular. Anytime you need to come back on the coaches lounge to share any other anything that's going on in your world, if you have going on events or whatever that you want to bring visibility and promote, I am here for you. And Thank I you. just want to tell you again, it has just been uh just a celebrity. You're a celebrity lady. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you take care, lady. We'll talk soon. Oh, you too. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much.